Now, we are coming to a session where we are saying now, what should we do to address this? This is a question of what is your strategic decision-making framework? Meaning that, if at all you understand that there are challenges in the marketplace, how do you address them? Now, as a management institution, we have a proposal for you, which we would want to look together, go around together, discuss together, and see whether this framework, which we have developed, can be used to you, can be used to support you as a manager when you are making your decision. And this framework, we call it at a mat level, in the sense that it looks on three dimensions or into three levels. Number one, it looks into participation strategy or it looks into the business model. And number two, we are looking into the competitive strategy. And number three, we'll be looking into the operating strategy. We have papers. If you can't see it properly, we have papers which uh, we'll give you. Yes, can you distribute those, those papers, please? Yeah? If you cannot see from the... Now, we are saying this is a math level in the sense that we look into three levels. Number one, we look into the business model. And number two, we are looking into the competitive strategy. And number three, we are looking into the operating strategy. as a way of addressing the challenges which we are facing in the marketplace. And so this is a value-based and strategic decision approach. Yes. If you, if you feel like having more juice, having more coffee, tea, please feel free. As you strive to achieve your market leadership, do you know who is driving your market, your customer? Do you know who is driving your customers? As you fight towards getting more customers, acquiring more customers, as you say, as you strive towards getting more people to export or to send products abroad or whatever, um, I'm not sure if I got well what you are saying, but do you know who is at the back of the decision-making process for the people, for the customers whom you are trying to engage into a business? Do we know who is driving your customers' decisions? Do you know who is in charge of your customers? We are all here after customers, aren't we? If a bank has to grow, needs to have more customers. Yeah? When you go to a business, is it the business which is giving you a business? Or is it the customers or the people within the business who are giving you business? It's the people within the business who are giving you business. If you go to company A, is it the company which is giving you business or the decision makers within company A are the ones who are giving you business? Yeah. What, what the, guy, uh, the, the guy who wrote the Rich Dad Poor Dad, he just made one statement which I still remember nowadays and I don't forget it. He said that uh, there are people who are busy in the market selling products, but they don't focus into money. And so in the end, they end up selling, but don't get money because their focus was into selling, but not into the money. Now, this is a challenge now to the managers. When you go into a company A, what are you looking for? You're looking for people who can make a decision to open an account to you or to give you business, is it? So essentially what you're looking for, you are targeting the decision makers so that they can make decisions. 
After making that decision, then you can start your business relationship. So when I come to, what's your company? Jervis. Jervis. When I come to Jervis, it's a building. There are furnitures, there are properties. There are everything within there. But essentially when I come there, if I want to do business within, with Jervis, I'm looking for someone within Jervis who can make decisions. Now, it all depends on the values, the value systems behind the guys who are making decisions, which can make you successive or can make you fail. And so that's why we are saying it's a value-based strategic decision because within the target markets where you want to do business, people are driven by values. If you develop your products, your services, your solutions, if you don't align them with the value systems which is underpinning those decision makers, there are minimal chances if you'll make it. Until or unless if you change them. That's why as managers, we come with some promotional strategies aiming at changing the mindset of the decision makers to buy in into your products or to your solutions or the services. Why do we do marketing? Why do we do selling? Why do we do promotion? It's because we want to persuade people who have a different understanding, different thinking, to change them to what we have, to the products which we have, to the solutions which we have, so that they can buy in. Mm -hmm. And normally we do that, in the situation where what we have is what we have. The second option would be you developing products and services which align to their value systems. If you develop products and services which align to their value systems, there are chances that they will buy into the product because you have chosen to align yourself to the customers. But do we always have opportunities where we can develop and design services to align to the customer? There are chances no. Like in the banking sector where <coughs> across all the banks, you have more or less the same products. How do we differentiate ourselves? If you cannot differentiate yourself from the product level, then you go further, you differentiate yourself at the service level, where we all offer the same product but we offer it differently. So you change the way you offer the service, but it's the same, same service. It's all a saving account, but we offer it differently. So you align yourself to the customers in terms of the service offering, how you offer the service to the customer. And so, if you look into the model, the participation strategy in the market or the positioning strategy into the market, you go into the target market where you have chosen these are the customers whom I want to focus into. If you look into the number one, the quadrant number one. And number two, some of the decision on the target market, you'll have to ask yourself, what kind of customer segment do, do, we, do, do I want to focus into? And number three, you'll have to make a decision now between the service, the product, and the solutions. How do I design the product and services for the market, for the customer segment within the target market? And so at this level, your question will be, what kind of service, product, and solution should I develop to meet the needs of the customer segment which I'm targeting into. And number four, one of the decisions which you'll have to make is how do I serve my customers? How do I deliver the product and services to my customers? I'll use an example for the banking. There are customers whom you have to deliver the service online. There are customers, if you give them ATMs, they cannot use ATMs. They are better off going into the banking hall. So you have to cater for those kind of customers if that's a customer segment which you are targeting. 
their customers who can use uh, mobile banking or uh, SIM banking or whatever, or mobile phone banking. But their customers, they are not prepared to step ahead and they use ATM, SIM banking, online banking or whatever. They are customers who don't want to use cards. So you develop your product and services and the mechanism on how you will deliver those products to the customers. But the challenge is, what is it uh, driving these customers' differences? This is what we have to ask ourselves. What is it making someone choose to use ATM or someone feel uncomfortable to go and be served through the, whole, the, the banking hall? There are people who are not prepared to go stand in the queue, but there are people who are very comfortable to go and stand in the queue 